But good to see you. It's been a long time uh, that we've seen you here. So great to have you back. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right. So um, I'd like to introduce to everyone what the NRC is working on uh, in, towards uh, 3D electronics. Uh, we're using a process called tomographic volumetric additive manufacturing. Uh, so this is work, as I just mentioned, done at the NRC. So that's uh, Canada's federal research labs. So tomographic volumetric additive manufacturing, um, from this point on, I'll just call it VAMF just for brevity. But what it is, is a technique that was developed in 2019 by a group in Ber Berkeley and at the same time, another group independently uh, at EPFL in Switzerland. And what it is, is uh, it uses um, a DLP projector and it projects light patterns onto a vial, uh, a rotating vial containing photoresins. Um, the projected light um, pattern is calculated such that it matches the desired um, geometry of the, of the 3D object you're, you're after. So after you've um, projected enough light dose, uh, your <clears throat> object, um, it'll trigger polymerization in those volume, in the, the voxels, and you'll get uh, your object. So I have a, an example here. You'll see the Benchy just pop up in the resin vial. So this is um, quite a rapid way to 3D print. Uh, you can print to high resolution. Um, you don't need support structures because it's just being printed in the, the resin itself. And you don't have layer artifacts, so it's a smooth finish. And the, the last advantage I wanted to point out is that you can overprint. I'll get into that in a few slides. So here's just another example that projector turns on and you see the, the boat or what we call benchy show up. Um, all right, so this is a emerging technique, 3D printing technique, and people have been exploiting it to, to print glass. Um, it's, this technique is quite big with bioprinting. A lot of tissue engineering is being done with this, uh, using this technique because it's gentle on cells. Uh, we've have a, we've seen examples of microfluidic devices being f formed um, because the, you have more freedom um, in terms of uh, the lack of support structures. Um, and then this is something that came out of our research group. Um, we were able to make um, micro optics with high quality surface finishes, and that's because you don't have the layer layering artifacts of traditional three D printing. Um, what is also unique about this technique, and I alluded to it to a few slides ago, is that you can overprint. So what that means is you can introduce an existing object to your resin vial and then uh, 3D print on top of that object. And so there's a few examples in, in literature that have done this. So as an example, we have a 3D printed handle uh, that was um, put onto a, a metal dowel. Uh, we have a, an example here of um, a shape responsive polymer that was overprinted on an exoskeleton to demonstrate the potential for soft robotics. And then in this example on the right, um, this is an auditory device um, and a, a, a polymer uh, was printed around it to make it an ear implant. So um, we thought, well, this could be a really good approach to introduce electronics to objects. So um, this is what this presentation is about. Um, so let me just introduce the concept. Uh, the idea is we would introduce an object um, to a photo, a vial containing photoresin and print the, a pattern with a functional resin. And once that's printed, you can then do some exchange um, with silver and then uh, perform some electroless copper plating on top of that to get your conductive 3D pattern. Um, so the, the key to this is um, the, uh, alignment. Um, so we've spent some time, whenever we, we introduce an, a new object to, to make sure we have all the fixtures right, um, designed so that uh, your base object sits right in the center of the projected light. And in here I have an example of a test pattern that we have where we started off printing uh, lines that um, 